Do you want to learn how you can create a custom authorizer to allow you much greater control over access to your APIs? In this video, that is exactly what I'm going to show you how to do. Hi guys, my name is Sam with Complete Coding, where our aim is to make you into the best developer that you can be. In this video, we're going to look at custom authorizers. These are Lambda functions that you can put in front of any of your API endpoints to run some code and check if the person making the request has permission to access that API. This can be really powerful as it allows you to build a scalable way of authorizing all of your endpoints. So what we're going to do now is jump into the code and see how we can set that up. Now that we're back inside the code, we can start creating this authorizer. We're going to do that by going into our lambdas and creating a new folder. And in this folder is going to be called authorizers. And for now, we're going to create one new file called any token.js. This is the Lambda code that is going to run and check the content of the API request and check whether we want to allow or deny this API request to access the main endpoint Lambda. As normal, we start by exports.handler is an async event. And in here, the first thing we like to do is console log out the event. So console.log the event out. And then now we've got the event, we want to get the token ID off the request. So we do that by saying const token ID equals, and there's a couple of different ways we could have the token ID passed up. It could be on the event headers, or it could be in event.authorization token. So we need to have this token ID equal whichever of those is valid. So to do that, we can say token ID equals event.headers and normal braces event dot headers, square brackets, and then in here, capital X dash A M Z dash security dash token. And what this is going to do is it's going to say if there is a headers on the event and the event headers of Amazon security token exists, then use that. Inside that bracket, we're also going to add another or, and we're going to copy this event headers like that, paste that in, and just change these all to be lower case, because sometimes they can be sent as uppercase or lower case. If we save that, it now says event headers and either security headers or security token. As well as that, we also want to say or event dot authorization token, as sometimes the request token is passed through like that. If we save this file, we now have this formatted so that token ID is either one of these two or it is the event authorization token. 
Now that we have the token from the headers, we need to check that it actually exists. So if there is not a token ID, that's because the security header token here, here, and here all weren't defined. Therefore, there was no token passed up. So we're going to console log out a little message saying could not find a token on the event. And next, what we're going to do is we're going to return a reject policy. So return generate policy. And this is going to pass in an object with allow as false. So this is saying that we do not want to allow this request to access the API it's trying to. So we need to, uh, we now need to create this generate policy function. At the very bottom of our code, we can say const and then paste in the generate policy. This is a function that takes an object and one of the parameters in this object can be allow. In here, we want to return an object and this needs to be a very specific object. This needs to be an object using the I am documentation so that when this returns, it stops the request going through and accessing the Lambda endpoint. So the first parameter is principal ID, and that is a string of token, policy document, and that is an object. And of course, this is obviously quite hard to copy out. So there is a link in the description to the finished code where you can just copy this function if you want to use it. In this policy document, there is a version, which is going to be 2012-10-17. Then there are some statements. And in this statement, we have an action of a string execute dash API colon invoke. And we want to say that we are not allowing this if allow is false, but we are allowing it if it is true. So the effect we are doing a ternary equation, so allow question mark, and this question mark means if allow is true, return the first value, which is going to be allow, and then a colon. So this is this is like an if else statement. So if allow is true, return allow. Else return deny. Just like that. And the last thing we need to do is specify the resources. And that is going to be a string of star saying that it is either allowed to access anything or it is denied access to everything. So now we've got this. So if we pass up a token, oh, if we don't pass up a token, it's going to say that we are not allowed to carry on with the API request. Now, what we want to do is we actually want to get this from a database. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a try catch. Like that. 
and inside this try, we want to try and get the token by ID from our Dynamo table. So const token equals await dynamo dot get and a dynamo get requires an ID which is going to be token ID and a table name which is going to be token table name and this is a variable so what we can do is go up to the top of our code and import this as we've done with other tables as from our environment variables so const token table name which is pasted there equals process dot env dot token table name we also need to import dynamo so import dynamo from dot dot slash it's in the common folder and it is the dynamo.js file so now we've saved all of that this should make a request to dynamo trying to get the token id from the token table and returning that whole row if it's unable to there's going to be an error and we're going to land into this catch but we'll deal with that in a second the first thing we need to do is say if there isn't a token then we want to reject this policy so console.log we're saying that if there's no token there was a token id but there was, we couldn't find a token for that one so no token for id for token id of and i'm actually going to change these into template strings with backticks so that you can put dollar curly braces and copy the token ID into there. This just means that we can see that we have looked for a token and not found it, and we'll be able to see what the token ID passed up was. Now we want to reject this, so we can just copy this function call here and paste it in, as we're generating a policy saying that we're not allowed to carry on. The next thing we want to check is we want to add a check for if the token is expired or not. You often want to add expiries onto tokens so that people don't use them forever. This is a good practice if you want to give out someone a access for a day or for a week, but don't want them accessing it forever. But we can always have it as optional because sometimes you want to use that same token, for example, in your own app forever, and you never want it to expire. So if there is token dot expiry date, so if there is an expiry date and token dot expiry date is less than date dot now so that's saying if there is an expiry date on the token and it is less than now as in if we have passed that date then we need to reject so console.log after expiry date and again, we can paste in that generate policy allow false. And now we're at the bottom of this try. If we've found the token and either there isn't an expiry date or the expiry date is in the future, we want to generate a repo uh, policy, but this time allow is going to be true. 
The last thing we want to do is if there is any errors inside here, specifically if this dynamo get fails, it's going to go into this catch. And in here, we also want to generate a policy saying that it is not allowed. And we're going to add a console.log of error, just like that, so we can find out what has gone wrong. That is all we need to do inside this any token .js file. So now we can go into our serverless YAML file where we can start setting up everything else that we need. The first thing that we need to do is create the token table name, which is a new Dynamo table. So if we go down to the very bottom of our code, we have these Dynamo tables. We can copy the my Dynamo DB table and paste it in at the bottom. And we'll have to do a little bit of formatting, just like that. So that this all lines up properly. So my Dynamo DB table, we can change to token table and make sure that lines up with the my Dynamo table. It is a Dynamo table, unsurprisingly, but this time it's self.custom and we're going to change this reference. We're going to change it to token table name and paste it in there. It has an attribute of ID, but it doesn't have an attribute of um, game. And we're just going to clean this up a little bit so that it all works. Now we've got the Dynamo DB table set up. We need to set up its name and the environment variable. So I'm going to copy token table name again, go up into our custom and add a new token table name of token table name. Simple as that. We also need to add this to our environment variables. So if we go up into environment, token, token table name is dollar self colon custom dot token table name. So that is the Dynamo DB setup completed. So now we have got to add our authorizer as a function and add it to some of our endpoints to authorize those. The first part of this is actually creating a new function called authorizer any token. And this simply just has a handler and that handler is lambdas slash authorizers slash any token dot handler. So this is just saying that there is a function which points at our any token dot JS file. We can now use this as if we go to get player score. At the moment, there is a handler and a HTTP event. So this becomes an API endpoint. If we want to add authorization onto this, we can add a little bit more configuration into the HTTP request config. We can say authorizer. And note that this is with a Z, not an S because America. Inside that authorizer, there is a name. This name needs to be the name of the function that we call when we want to run the authorizer. So we can copy that from here. As well as the name, we have a type. 
And there are quite a few different types of authorizer. Some of them generate a token themselves. Some of them integrate with other systems, but we want to actually access the whole request. So our type is request. Next, we need to add the identity source, which is the location at which the authorizer is looking for the request token. So we need to say identity source, and this is a method dot request dot header. And the header that we're looking for is x dash amz dash security dash token. If we save that now, we have set up the authorizer for the get player score. We can now copy that and paste that onto any of the other API requests like this save that and we now have authorization on both the get player score and the create player score endpoints. If we go into our terminal and run SLS deploy, this will now create the new function and will deploy these endpoints with authorization. This takes a little bit of time, so I'll get back to you when that is done. Now that that has finished deploying, we can scroll up into our code and find the get player score endpoint and copy that. We can now head over into our Postman instance, paste in our URL and add a random ID. If we hit send, we get back a 401 unauthorized. And that is because we're not passing up the header that we are required. If we go into headers, we can then add that API key. So it's going to be x dash amz dash security dash token. And for now, we are going to add in a random code and hit send. So this has still failed, even though we are passing up a token. So we're going to go into our console and find out why. If we go into CloudWatch and find the inside our log groups, we can find our authorizer any token. And if we select the most recent events, we can see there was an error fetching Y948 from the token table name database. This is exactly what we'd expect because we haven't added any tokens to our database. What we can do is we can open up Dynamo in a new tab. We can go into our tables and to the token table. If we go to items and create a new item. In here, we can generate a new token. So I'm just going to add a random ID, make sure to copy it, and save this row. So now we have that new token. If we go back into our Postman instance and paste in the U48 token and hit send, this time we get a 204 no content which is because this ID doesn't exist. If we go back into our Postman, find our player points. So 30, 34, 2. Change that to 30, 34, 2. And hit send. This time we get back the user exactly as we'd expect. In this video, we have set up our own custom authorizer. We've created a Lambda function, which takes the token, looks up in DynamoDB, and if it is valid, 
and it is not expired, then we authorize that user. But if it is not a valid token, or if it's not in the table, or even if it is expired, we don't allow that API request to access that endpoint. This is a really powerful way of setting up authorization on your API, because to add a new user to your APIs, all you need to do is have an endpoint which adds a new row to your tokens table and sends them that new token. This means you can have as many companies as you want or customers. Anytime a new customer signs up, they can get a token automatically without you having to do anything. You can then take this a step further by adding fine-grained permissions per token to say certain users are allowed to access certain endpoints, whilst others are only allowed to access a subset of your API endpoints. If you've learned something new in this video, it really helped me out if you hit that like button and leave a comment below saying how you're going to use this. And I hope to see you in the next video.